Instead, join the Goslings interview live stream and podcast. The Goslings, a dark lit digital speakeasy of free thinkers, a super chat of radical truth seeking wizards who eat trolls for second breakfast. Topics that'll make your mama's hair stand on end, ideas that'll make your pastor's knees knock, guests that will illuminate the hidden chambers of your mind, and interviews that strike down the darkness. Welcome to the Goslings. All right, welcome everyone. I'm Jonathan. I'm Nick. And we are the Goslings. And uh, <laughs> we're we running the truncated uh, intro today. Since. That was the that was the very truncated <laughs> intro. I don't know what happened we there. We were so excited to do this interview today that we just decided to go from a 48 second intro down to a 33 second intro. You guys don't care about so, the intro. No Come on. Cares. That's yeah. just to make sure everyone knows what we're doing here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, sorry about that. It's probably the devil. Yeah, yeah. Nice try, Satan. Yeah, nice try. Yeah. You're not gonna you keep won't us win down. here. Nope. Not today. Not today. And there it goes again. Ooh, I don't know. We got yeah. technical issues. Here we go. Whatever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Turn it off. <laughs> so, anyways, welcome to the Goslings. Welcome to the Goslings. Uh, we are super excited today. Probably more excited than I, I've, I've been in a while. Um, the guest today, phenomenal guy. Yeah. Uh, you guys have all heard of him. We're going to bring him on in a second. Very uh, busy and was yeah. gracious enough to give us an hour today. So, yeah, yeah we're going to blow through all this stuff and get right into yeah. it. Yeah. So let's do the obligatories. First mm-hmm. of all, of course, subscribe. Yes. Hit the button. Hit the bell. Do the things. I don't know if it even matters anymore on YouTube, but we're going to keep hurt. saying it. It can't hurt. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So whether you're on the old channel, the new channel, uh, subscribe. Uh, and uh, that way you can stay abreast of all the wonderful guests yeah. we have coming down the pike for you. Yeah. Uh, and uh, before we get to our toast, we want to real quickly mention our sponsors. Yes. You want to do the Cothon? Uh, yes, absolutely. So uh, the mugs that we are drinking from are our Cothon Spartan mugs designed by Joel over at Cherico Pottery. That is Cherico Pottery, C H E R R I C O pottery.com. And uh, he designed these in conjunction with uh, our favorite novelist and author, Stephen Pressfield. And the great one. They are yeah, the Jedi master of, of writers. And uh, we love these Spartan mm-hmm. Cothon mugs. Everything he makes is handcrafted custom. Um, it is worth every penny. These are some of the most amazing mugs that uh, that we have. And we are quite like the mug collectors. Oh, for dinner. sure. Yeah. It's, oh, it's for sure. Sad. So, yeah. 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 And then, of course, we have Jardani Jovanovic, yes. uh, our sponsor, Mike Fisher, uh, sent us these amazing products. I've been using them. You can probably tell the difference. I did notice a yeah. slightly better sheen and contour Absolutely. to your, uh, your I've duster been a- there. I have been applying both north and south here mm-hmm. with these amazing products. You guys should check them out, Jardani jo- Jovanovic. Dot com. What's the tagline that you came up with for that? So their tagline is real products for real men. I, like I have dovetailed with be as sexy as you are deadly. <laughs> Give 007 a run for his money. Yes. With Jardani Jovanovic. Excellent. Com. Excellent. Yes. Uh, and then uh, without further ado, I think we should do our toast. Absolutely. Yep. Who went first last time? I don't uh, remember. You should go first this time. Okay. I'll go first. Grab your drinking vessels. It is time. Take up the broken sword of your father and strike down the darkness. Cheers. Cheers. It'd be really funny if we accidentally broke these mugs. On it, air. it might happen one day. <laughs> Depending on the excitement of the guest. You know, day. like, oh, we're so excited. Ding, you know, and it's not a beer stein, so it just shatter. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Take well, it away. Well, dude, uh, we are four minutes and 30 seconds into this. And we've done everything. We can bring our guest on. I know. Yeah. We didn't like burn a whole record. bunch of time. Yeah. yeah. I think it is. So uh, I'm going to bring our guest on now. Um, Mike Rimbo is a seer prophet. He's the founder of Behold Wonder, uh, and he's the pastor of Prophetic Ministry at Vineyard Church Northwest in Cincinnati, Ohio. Yeah. And he's the man who sees angels. Ladies yes. and gentlemen, our guest, Micah Turnbow. Micah, how are you? <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hello. <laughs> that was fun. I love that. I did my own off, off screen. Nice. Oh, so nice. That was awesome. <laughs> What you, what you sipping on? What you sipping on? Oh, this is uh, body armor. <laughs> All right. That'll work. That'll yeah. work. We're doing, we're drinking coffee over here. Just start Healthier with coffee. Healthier than the coffee we're drinking yeah. right now. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I was like, well, I have body armor, so. I'll just go ahead. <laughs> well, Micah, thank you so much for joining us. You're super busy. Yeah. Um, if just so everyone know, and probably everyone already knows this, but we uh, we heard about Micah a few months ago. He was a guest on Blurry Creatures, which was mm-hmm. one of our favorite podcasts. Yep. And uh, was so inspired and encouraged by his message. Uh, we reached out to him just on a. Went on a limb. It was a long shot, uh, yeah. but uh, he was gracious enough to give us some of his time today and talk about the amazing experiences that he's had. Um, I wanted to kind of start and just kind of ask a little bit about your background. Like how long – tell us about your your gift mm-hmm. and when it all started. Yeah. Oh, that's a fun question. Um, so, yeah, so my gift – I have a, a gift – um, it's, it's a gift of discernment, but in the way it manifests specifically is I see into a spiritual realm, into the spiritual realm where there's angels and demons and other spiritual beings. And um, there are several ways you can see into the spiritual realm. With me specifically, um, I see with my eyes wide open. So it's like uh, very much like me touching another person. I can I can hear them. I can see them. I can smell them, you know, and um, it's very, very, very real to me. Um, and sometimes, uh, it will be so real that I have to, um, take a break and say, okay, let my, let my physical body just chill for a moment because it will, um, enhance and also kind of tire my body out because the glory of God can be so intense at that time. But, um, I started when I started seeing, actually, when I was really little, my parents would, um, we would have these New Year's services um, at our old church, and um, I used to watch my mom and my sisters do praise dance. And in the midst of doing them doing praise dance, they would uh, wave their hands over their head, and I would see colors, and they looked like ribbons, but they were just really bright lights, mm. and they would just move around them. And me being a kid, I thought that they were part of a show, like I thought it was just lights show. You know, I didn't know that those were, you know, angels, but I would see them move Mm. around them and they were very beautiful. And then they had kind of like a mock throne on um, on the stage where, you know, Jesus was supposed to sit. But I would see a man, the Lord Jesus, sitting in that seat watching the show and he would just smile and he would be so bright and light would come out of him. And again, I thought he was part of the show. I didn't. I didn't realize that I was seeing, uh, you know, into the spirit world. I didn't know it was like a big gift. You know, I would see men in white, uh, people in white. Actually, they always all they didn't always look like men, but um, they were people standing in the back of the service, and they would be dressed in bright light. Mm. And um, I thought, hey, these are these are part of the service. You see people standing in the <laughs> background. But later on, I start realizing, huh. Not everybody's seeing the same things, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. that I'm seeing. And my parents would say, uh, my mom and my dad, they would say, oh, you know, I think you're having visions. Or I think you're, you're, you're seeing in the, in the spiritual world. But they were trying to actually grab it, too, because they had some prophetic words about my life that he would be a prophet, that he would see, you know, all this kind of stuff. Really? Um, but, you know, you, you hear those things, but you don't exactly know how that's going to turn out. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Know? So they had to kind of. How old were you? Well. How old were um, you at the time? Let's see. When I first started seeing, I was probably around like two or three years old. Oh, wow. You know, I start seeing around then. Wow. But my first realization that, oh, I'm seeing things uh, that no one is. I was like six or seven, you know, when I'm starting to see like, oh, this is I'm seeing things no one else is, you know. Um, yeah. But then again, I wasn't I wasn't bothered that no one was seeing it because I had such a good family that embrace that so i didn't feel odd i just was like well i'm just not going to say much to other people <laughs> you yeah. know but my right. brother and my sisters they were all cool with it you know that's awesome so everybody was supportive growing up yes especially cool. my brother he thought let's he would he would want to play games with the angels and with our transformer <laughs> toys and he would he would be the one to be like let's I feel let's that. You know, let's uh, turn off all the lights and see if we see angels in the room. And we do it. And I was like, okay, that's fine. And so we turn off the lights and then you'd see the, the the sparks of light flash everywhere. And then we had feathers on the ground, you know. And wow. so we just played. Me and my brother would just play with it, you know. So you had feathers on the ground that you could <laughs> pick up that were tangible. Yep. And so my brother oh, would yeah. do these things and he would say, 
uh, he would say, Micah, where are the, where are the angels? Uh, and I would point, and we'd be playing outside, and I'd point. And so then he would go over there, and he would pick up a feather, you know, and then he'd put it in the, and he had a little, a little bag, a little plastic bag of all the feathers he would collect inside, outside, wow. wherever we were. Because he loved to, <laughs> he loved to collect wow. the feathers. Wow. <laughs> yeah. oh, did, did they like playing with it? Like, could you tell? Oh, did they yeah. enjoy it? Yeah. Every time, every time. And my brother, he was amazing because he would, uh, sometimes he would see into the spiritual world too. So mm -hmm. it would be neat, would be like, we'd be, um, I would go to sleep, you know, we could, at nighttime. And I have this encounter uh, with angels coming in, you know, this, I'm a little bit older now, uh, you know, maybe about, you know, 15, 16, I would have, because we shared a room. So I would sleep, have these encounters with angels and I'm like, Lucas, wake up. Oh my gosh. And he'd just be out. And then that morning he would wake up and he'd say, Michael, what happened? I had a dream that there were angels in our room, you know? So he was always really? huh. confirming things that I would experience. And I, he, and we would just share he would have stuff about, the spiritual realm all the time with each other man that's cool wow. man that's cool so obviously you've seen angels a lot of different forms i know there's a huge oh, like yes. variety mm -hmm. uh but i have to ask before i start asking about angels mm -hmm. i mean i want to know what jesus looks like yeah. <laughs> oh I mean, that's where man. i want to start oh jesus is just incredible i mean <laughs> He is so strong and so powerful. I mean, and the kindest, sweetest person you'll meet, but he's he's such an intensity in his eyes because when he's when he's looking at you, it's like all the love in him is just being direct directed towards you, you know? Wow. And he's he's amazing. And he, I mean, like I've seen him in different like uh, different um, looks, you know, where his hair will be down. You know, he's he looks like a from the Middle East, you know, but his hair will sometimes be fully down. Sometimes he'll be up in a man bun. Sometimes it's a, <laughs> you know, in a in a half bun, you know. Mm -hmm. But he is the happiest person you can meet. And mm -hmm. rainbows. Sometimes he'll come in so much glory, but these rainbows will come out of him in these waves, you mm -hmm. know, and and these waves of color. And it's like you can touch color. You can feel the light in the color substance and it's yeah. coming out of him. And then you smell these fragrances, uh, you know, apples or cinnamon, or sometimes you'll felt, smell like um, frankincense, vanilla, yeah. just sweetness coming out of him, hmm, you know? And, wow. and um, he's amazing. He, you know, what's cool about yeah. Jesus is that he, I, I get a lot of times where people will ask me, you know, a lot of times about like, you know, Micah, why, you know, why don't you, you know, talk more on, on the, you know, the judgment of God or those kind of things. And, and why are you so happy? And that's just because the, I'm around Jesus and that oil of gladness runs all over him. You know, that oil of joy runs all over him. And there's, there's no other reason to, to prophesy, you know, he, he has to be the point. He's the anointed one. He has to be the point of why we see or prophesy anything, you know? Yeah. He's epic. We had an interesting question from um, mm -hmm. Shannon, who's one of our patrons. She asked, what color were his eyes? Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. So I've seen Jesus um, with uh, hazel eyes. Um, sometimes I'll see him with green eyes. And, and people will ask me, like, well, why, you know, why are his eyes changing color? Some people see him with blue eyes, green eyes. Sometimes he has eyes of fire. Yeah. I got fiery eyes. Oh my gosh, you guys. When he comes in with eyes of fire, it's not like these little sparks. It's flames coming out of his eyes. It's, it's shooting yeah. out of his eyes and he's looking at you. And I remember looking at those eyes of fire and I, thought, I always wanted to ask him, why are your eyes of fire? Why are they there? And he said, because it is the intensity of love I feel for you right now. Yep. That it manifests like fire. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, yeah. that is incredible. But wow. Jesus' eyes will be beautiful in different colors sometimes because he will appear in ways that you will that you will mostly receive beauty. Yeah. So some people will see green, some people will see blue, some people will see hazel, some people will see brown. Mm -hmm. And that's just because he is altogether lovely. And the glory coming out of him, the beauty coming out of him, we only get to pick up certain waves of it, you know, because right. we only have two eyes. So yeah, and we only see a limited uh, yeah. cross section of the color spectrum. Yes, you know. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
So you've you've had all these amazing things from an early childhood. Um, mm -hmm. When were you uh, when were you saved? Were you saved oh, from an early age? Yeah, I mean, we grew up in in church, and uh, you know that was my our parents made Jesus such a huge part of our upbringing. We were all homeschool. All kids, all kids were homeschooled. And awesome. So she, Cool. Nick's a big homeschool dad proponent. Yeah. So yep. yeah, so, dad, right yeah. Now. there's a, a confirmation as they say. There the it church, is. Yeah. Doing the yes. the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, man. We, yeah, our parents were uh, were really good. My my mom, the way she would respond to my visions and and, and the encounters I had with angels, she would um, she would have a a journal and a red ink pen, and she would write down the encounters I had. And I would sit with her on the bed, and she'd write down the encounters I had, and then she would help me kind of get understanding. But she would always would say this to me, because um, dad's my dad was a fireman, so um, okay. he was cool. you know in and out you know because of firemen. But um, she would say these things to me, Micah, when you um, have an encounter with God, when you have an encounter with the supernatural always take time to say thank you to Jesus. And so go back and she would even tell me when I would come to, to, to share with her the visions I had encounters that she would say, go back into, into your room and tell Jesus, thank you. And so that mm -hmm. cultivated a lifestyle of thankfulness, That's you know, awesome. um, and every experience she would say, tell Jesus, thank you. Where my dad was like, <laughs> he was more, all right, Micah. So, uh, you're seeing these guys, you're seeing these angels. So how are you feeling? Are, do you, are they not harming you? Cause dad was all like the protector, you know? The like, protector. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. Dad, good man, good in? man. Sound awesome. yeah. Who's this guy coming into my room talking to my son? You know, yeah. and then there was, there was yeah. one point where my dad, he, um, I, I, I was much younger, but I went to sleep in my parents' bed and my dad slept in my room. And uh, just to kind of feel it out, like, okay, let, you know, these, yeah. these angels are, and he told me that he's laying in, in, in my bed and he hears this most friendly hello. And he looks towards the wall and he sees this head come out of the wall of the most kind, smiling person, you know, looking at him saying hello. And then dad's like, all right. <laughs> he gets up, he's like, okay, I, I, that's good. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And he tells me that morning, okay, yeah, you can talk to these guys, you know. So my dad was brilliant, but he was a man of prayer. He would lay on the floor in the hallway before he would go to, to work, 4 a.m. And, you know, I'm getting up to go to the bathroom. You know, me mm -hmm. being a kid, I'd jump on his back, you know, you know, to play with him. But he'd be on the floor <laughs> speaking in tongues. And so my dad taught wow. me a lifestyle of prayer, you know, because oh, I said, awesome. well, this is what dad does. He lays on the ground and he pray prays, so I'm going to do that. Yeah, that's awesome. Man, your parents sound amazing. That's Mike. awesome. Yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> yeah, they're so cool. Um, so you had an extremely supportive upbringing. Yeah. Um, you, you know, Nick and I are big believers in the supernatural, in mm -hmm. you know, demonic possession. I wrote novels about the wars between the angels. Like we're all about this kind of thing. Yeah. Yes. Um, but even within the church, mm -hmm. it's very skeptical, and they always want to hand this stuff off to uh, like we've even interviewed our narrator. His father is an Anglican priest who's on the exorcism team. Yeah. And wow. we talk about this kind of stuff a lot, how like somebody always wants to hand it off to uh, a mental diagnosis or a mental illness. Did you ever encounter that kind of skepticism within the church that tried to dismiss yeah. um, your stuff? And did they ever try to say, Oh, it's a seizure or it's mm -hmm. schizophrenia or it's mm -hmm. any of this stuff. Did they ever try to push that? And, and how did your parents respond? That's a really good question. So yeah, my, I, yeah, there were, there were moments and times where, you know, church would just say, okay, you know, um, this is a little bit much. And me being especially young and seeing, you know, you don't really have filters that much, <laughs> you yeah. know, you just kind of say what's there. And there were times yeah. where I would reveal hidden things and, uh, that was pastors were like, Whoa, okay. This is not, you know, um, this isn't good. And there was a time where um, I'm standing in front of one of the pastors at a, at a church, one of our churches. And I uh, say, I point to the pastor and I say, you know, you know, there were two ladies, one on his left, one on his right. And I would say, she's your wife. She's not your wife. Why are you with her? You know, I would say, and you know, I was pointing out. Oh, wow. oh, oh boy. Oh, uh, discernment and my, indeed. Yes. And my poor parents. <laughs> they were like, like, you know, they were like, oh, God. you know, and um, 
the guy threw his sweat cloth at me and he said, you're cursed, you know? And I carried that for a while, even until I got on staff at my, at my current church right now, where uh, my pastor had to break that off of me because I didn't, you know, honestly, I didn't realize it was like embedded into my spirit that, that what he said impacted me that way. My parents were super good at brushing that off and saying, Hey, you're not cursed. You know, when I, when I met my current pastor, he took uh, a, cloth that he cleans his glasses with and put some oil on it <laughs> and he said here stand up and i stood up put oil on it and then he threw it at me he said you're blessed you're loved and healing just mm-hmm. came in through to me yeah you know um and i yeah. was able to move forward you know and what the lord wow. had for me but yeah there were moments of people you know oh you know he's a little bit weird or micah's odd or uh-huh. i would get micah's odd a lot uh-huh you know, yeah I'm, yeah sure sure yeah i've heard that before too yeah <laughs> solidarity brother yeah <laughs> um so um we wanted to ask you uh have you ever had any harrowing or hilarious experiences with angels if any mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. uh what are like a couple that sort of bubble up to the top of your brain whenever <laughs> so heroin can you tell me what that word means oh again? yeah like scary like frightening oh. like oh this oh. is i want to run away kind of <laughs> you know maybe all yeah of them I've had case. i don't know <laughs> yeah it's good because they're angels are different some of them look like us some of them do not and um their personalities could be very different you know depending on how often they interact with people but yeah um i've had one uh one time where i at my first apartment I was living in with my sister and my, and my brother, um, I would, we would live next to a Kroger and I would just walk there, you know, and talk to the Lord and, and, you know, pray and all that stuff. But I'm, I'm walking there and I'm just going to get a snack. And so I get, uh, I'm going to the yogurt aisle. And as I'm going to the yogurt aisle, I see this, you know, angel kind of just flies into the building. You know, some angels just swoop in on the wind and they just kind of, And I'm used to that. You know, they swoop in and they kind of look at what you're doing. They look at the people interacting with the people. And so I'm getting my my business, getting my yogurt. And then the angel says, oh, you should get the lemon, the lemon uh, yogurt (laughs) flavor. And I said, you know, and me being like, sometimes I'm like, okay, there is a message in this. There's a uh-huh. message in this. Why could I be? <laughs> you know, I'm thinking. <laughs> and, then, uh, and I looked at the angel and I, you know, and I can talk under my breath so I don't look weird, you know, mm-hmm. or talk with my mind so I don't look weird. But um, mm-hmm. I talk under my breath and I said, uh, why? And then the angel, <laughs> literally, the angel pulls out a spoon and he said, I want to try some. <laughs> so I said, <laughs> you know, like, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good. So what was interesting was that I'm preparing to like, I'm checking out the angels just walking around, but it says in his word that he makes angels win. So a lot of times in Hebrews chapter one, a lot of times people uh, around will sense the angels and it's wind. And so I'm checking out and there would be a breeze. And sometimes the breeze would, you know, people had light paper hanging out on the checkout line where the, they check out their stuff the wind would knock it over and they would look around like, what's all this wind? And I'm like, what's the angel in here? You know, he's wind. So we go back to my apartment and I have my own spoon and he has his spoon and then he's waiting for me to open it. And so I open up the lid and then he takes his spoon and he, and he just starts eating it. The, the, (laughs) the yogurt and I'm eating it. And I'm thinking, this is the strangest, most hilarious encounter I've ever had. And so I'm waiting for a message from this guy. I'm literally waiting for a message. Uh And uh, after we finish, I said, so is there anything you want to tell me? And then he looks at me and then he said, Hey, this is what it's like to also entertain angels unaware. And I said, Oh, and that was a whole new meaning because sometimes we think that, which uh, that's happened to me too, where they come in, such a human flesh form, you know, but even beyond that, there's angels around us that are wanting to interact with us and for wanting us to be, to be involved in our lives in such unique ways. And so this hmm. was just a fun, hilarious encounter with an angel who wanted yogurt. And I told him That's when awesome. he was leaving, I said, if you want more, you can always come back. <laughs> <laughs> you do know? you, uh, do you ever have any uh, repeat encounters with specific angels uh, and like such as guardian angels mm-hmm. or anybody like that? Yes, I have had repeated uh, once for a while. Uh, there was an angel uh, who, let's see, this started probably about 2000 or so maybe about 2008. Yeah, 2008, 
where the Lord wasn't my choice, but the Lord started to uh, take me to places in hell, which was not my choice. Wow. I mm. actually fought him on that because I was like, I don't want to go. You can just tell me, just tell me about it, you know, but he wanted me to go because he was taking me to places in heaven and the mm. other spiritual realms. But he said, I want you to see the dark realm as well. And so I repeatedly saw um, an angel who would take me and then it later trans uh, transitioned to Jesus. But for a while, it was an angel who had a, a white hood. He looked kind of like, oh, he looked kind of like the guy from, I don't know if anyone's played like Assassin's Creed. Assassin's yeah. Creed. Yeah. yeah yep. With the hood and the knife. Uh -huh. under, like he had these hidden knives and such. And he was not very friendly. He was very like, you know, uh, yeah. you know, we're going for a purpose. If anything touches you, I'm going to kill it, you know? And I just was <laughs> like, hey, that's nice. Just, just keep me okay, bro. Yeah. You know, yeah. so <laughs> you've been repeated. Um, yeah, where I've seen um, angels of uh, come to me again and again and uh, and we talk yeah. and they do things. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. that's really interesting because there's a whole that, you know, we always hear about guardian angels and, mm -hmm. and do some people have like one guardian angel that just goes, oh, follows them through life or mm -hmm. watches over them through life or mm -hmm. does that do, do the guardian angels like change as you go through different seasons yeah, is of it, your life? Or is it right? like the military where you have details and deployments? Yeah, like, like shifts oh, of dude. angels? Yeah. Yes, that is such a great question. Yeah, there are angels. So there, there's angels that are specifically in charge of the whole guardian process. And that answers to Michael. Yeah. So um, Michael's the top military dog. So, you know, he's he's got things, shifts under him. But guardian angels are really special because their job is to go through life with you. So wow. all of your ups and your downs, you know, they are there with you. They're really more like a friend than just military yeah. Um, they watched you since you were born and they were, wow. you know, wherever you are, when you came out of mommy's tummy, they were in the room, you know, <laughs> wow. you know they, they, they are so wonderful. My guardian angel, his name is Eden and he's been with me for a while. And, and, uh, you know, since I was born and, and he's awesome, he's great, but he is different from, um, ministry angels where there's angels who like, for example, you guys have a ministry angel that's mm -hmm. for what you do. And their job is to enhance your work. You know, enhance what you do for the kingdom, but your guardian angels like looking after your heart, looking after your soul. You know, if there's yeah. demons that are coming at you, they're the first ones to go after it. And if they need assistance, they will ask for help. And that's happened too in my life where I was going through massive anxiety. I wasn't being attacked by a, a demon, you know, almost every night. And uh, Eden would wrestle him down and pin him down. And I would wake up because I would hear all the noise in my room. I'd wake Eden. up and I'd look over and there's Eden. Eden's huge. He's glamorous, like green and teal, like, you know, wings. And he's just muscle shirt, but he pins demons down. <laughs> and like, you know, it's <laughs> awesome. You know, and I wake startled up and I look over and there's Eden. And then he's, he points at me. He said, it's all right. Go back to sleep. I got it. I'm taking mm. care of it. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, Ugh, and I fall asleep. You know, but there were times where some demons were strong and he needed assistance and uh, angels like fire and with spears that had thunder and lightning at the end of them would stand at the foot of my bed and Eden would stand by the door because he needed some assistance, you know, so they will wow. ask for that as well. Mm -hmm. Man. That is incredible. Man, that blows my mind just trying to mention that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. I don't yeah. even know how to follow that up. I don't even know. Like, I used to, I used I to like, a... sit in church back when I first started writing books and just like envision all that stuff. Yeah. And I was just kind mm -hmm. of figured it was probably just my imagination. But like mm -hmm. listening to Micah talk, I'm like, mm, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know at this <laughs> point. <laughs> I'm not dude, so sure I, anymore. You know. Dude, I have seen angels. This one like, whoa, like freaked me out in a way, in a good way. But I've seen angels once uh, where they they were flying, so they were huge, like, I mean, bigger than a building, buildings, um, flying in, and I'm at, a, at the park, and I hear this low-sounding, like, aircraft, and I'm thinking, like, what in the world is that? Who would be flying this low? And yeah. I would see in the distance, and it was this huge angel that had hair and fire coming off of its hair. And it, its wings were like metallic and it was like, you know, and it, 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 it like slowed down and then it just changed shape. And it was this military angel with all these weapons on it. And then he would look at me and he would say, hello, beloved. They always mm -hmm. call me beloved. And I'm like, uh, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. oh, my gosh, you know, and then he would just slowly flew 
off into the distance. And I'm like, man, dude, there's all kinds. And I'm thinking like, I was telling, wow. ask Holy Spirit. I said, Holy Spirit, what was that about? Where was he going? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, this is so cool. Wow. Man, I got a, there's a couple of really great questions sure. uh, in the chat. Uh, Kira yeah. OC asked, are all angels male? Do they have kind of mm. a male appearance? Mm. That's a great question. Not all angels are. I've seen angels appear uh, more feminine. I've seen angels appear in, in a form of animals like a lion. There's a, there's a group of lion kind of angels that are called the Royal Guard. Um, mm. And there's like intense white brightness and they have uh, they breathe fire out of their mouth, and they oh, have wow. these huge golden wings. I've seen those guys. I've seen uh, the, the the feminine angels uh, that come to me are gorgeous, and some of there I've seen feminine female angels who are warriors, and I've seen female angels who work in healing, work in a guardian, all that kind of stuff. Different spheres of where angels can work, and uh, they're just as powerful. They appear feminine. They're just as powerful as the males, you know. But angels come in all kinds of Forms. I've seen angels. Yeah. I've seen an angel made out of knives, the blades of knives. Yeah, I remember you talk to talk about that. I remember hearing you say that. Yeah, mm -hmm. blades of knives, and I'm, and I play this game where I try to poke every one of them, you know, just to <laughs> keep it fun. But I was like, I can't poke this guy because I'll cut my finger. You know, but he looked at me and he smiled, and you know, and he was about like 14 feet tall. You know, he was he was a big guy. That was one of the things that uh, Gabriel Bello, uh, saxophonist and a mm -hmm. friend of ours, a great mm -hmm. Christian, was talking about. He said, uh, my father-in-law has seen angels taller than full-grown 30-foot trees. Oh, yes. Oh, that's so true. He, some, there's some that are that fill the hemisphere that are wow. huge. And I just saw that when I was driving. I had to pull over real quick because I was yeah. like, oh, <laughs> I need to. This is, wait a minute. This is, I've seen them, uh, huge ones that fill the hemisphere coming out of the sky with the Lord wow. Jesus and and I'm like at a red light and I'm just stunned and I know I went through several Greenless's cars were honking at me and I'm just staring. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Way better than seeing a UFO. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. <laughs> Much better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I do want to backtrack. Shannon had a question yeah. earlier um that I forgot to mention. She wanted to know and we're jumping back into the story a little bit here. Sure. Uh, she wanted to ask right there. Uh, she wanted to ask what the curse felt like or what did that entail? Mm -hmm. Like when the guy threw the sweat rag mm -hmm. at you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. How do you uh, how do you like know it was a curse and, and did you feel anything from that? That's a great question. And, you know, I didn't realize again, I didn't realize it was a a curse until five years ago oh. when I'm with my pastor. Because my parents were so good at having me move forward and just like, so I, I didn't really know. So when I was stepping into uh, ministry at my church, my pastor had asked me to like join staff, to lead a prophetic ministry, you know, all that kind of stuff. When he said that, suddenly I was, I felt fear, like it was like a knot in my stomach. And I yeah. thought, why is that there? And so I felt that and I, that fear, that rejection in me. And I'm like, and I know it's not coming from my pastor because we would meet every Wednesday you know, and talk about these things. And so I went home and the Lord brought that memory back to me, you know, really? and I thought, oh goodness, I remember that. So I went back and I told him. And so then he, uh, when I start telling him, I could feel this, uh, this warfare over my shoulder. Like there was like, like the demons were like, no, no, no. And then when he broke the curse, it just, it was like, warm oil in my stomach like you, you mm. drink a hot chocolate something real warm yeah. goes in yeah. your stomach and it, it just cleaned uh -huh. my spirit out and it was awesome man mm. cool it really cool. makes you think that you know curses curses can be put upon you and how much do you through your own naivete allow mm -hmm. them to exist or how much do you give them power to exist mm -hmm. yeah. over you yeah you know? yeah mm -hmm. it's just and it really helped me to realize like, you know, you, you have to watch what you say, you know, cause things right. leave an imprint, you know? Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and that left an imprint even to that didn't affect me till years later, you know, when yeah. I was stepping into something, then that, that curse took into effect, boom, like a grip, yeah. like it was like someone said, and activate, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was like, Whoa, where did this come from? So it's like a time bomb. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I have a question for you. I mean, there are a lot of people that have had uh, mm -hmm. angelic experiences. Mm 
mm-hmm. visions, dreams. Maybe they heard mm-hmm. something, felt something, and mm-hmm. they know or or believe it's angelic. Mm-hmm. And then there are other people that you might call, you know, prophetic people that experience mm-hmm. this more on a regular basis, like yourself. Yeah. But they're kind of afraid to say anything, mm-hmm. especially yeah. you know, especially at church. Yeah. Um, what would you say to other prophetic people that might be watching this who've never really had the courage to talk about their gift? Oh, how would you yeah. encourage them? I, you know, first of all, I know how you feel. I, I understand that it's it's very hard. Um, you feel very lonely. You feel very you feel odd, separated. But the cool thing is, is that even though you have a gift that many aren't experiencing, God does not want you to be alone. You know, He does not want you to be separated. He doesn't want you to feel odd or outside of the community. And one of the things I did um, was I prayed because there were seasons where our family didn't go to a church, you know, we couldn't find one, you know, but I, I prayed for community. I prayed for friends that I could share um, these, these encounters with, because you, it's helpful for the prophetic person because you need someone who cares about you and can allow you to express what your world is like, because then it gets like pressure on the inside of you. And then you start to become angry. You start to become, you know, frustrated with people. And I find that um, when I'm around prophetic people who need to talk, you know, and I just, I just listen. I don't even, I don't even say things like I saw that too. I just listen, listen to them. You, I feel the pressure in them subside because they're like, Oh, finally someone's listening to me. Oh, finally, yeah. you know? And so I encourage you to like, Pray for a community, pray for friends, even one or two people that you can just share your visions with them, the good, the bad, the ugly, you know, and I, yeah. I've gone through different seasons where I had different people in certain parts of my life who were those people, you know, and things change, life happens and things change. Yeah. You know, I currently now, you know, I, I have a church community, but even still in a church community, I have a best friend who uh, I share everything with, you know, everything. Yeah. And yeah. he just is a great listener. And that's, that's like therapeutic for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The catharsis of just being heard and understood a yes. lot of times mm-hmm. makes a big yes. difference for people, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and just being accepted and validated and just, yes. you know, yeah. Everybody needs like a, a an armor bearer. You yes. Know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. For sure. In my case, I, I needed, I needed to talk because I, it was so much I was seeing and I, you know, I did not want to become angry or bitter or or live in a place of rejection because I know that that is not Jesus's will. Jesus does not want the prophetic people to be alone. Yeah. I used to get I used to have this dream where I would see a table, a big table at a church and and uh, there were meals all on the table. And and I'm I'm looking I'm outside of the church. and I'm looking in through the window and I'm watching everybody eat. And I would be like, oh, I wish I could sit at that table. I wish I could. And then I heard the Lord say in a dream, he was like, no, it is time for the prophets to eat at the table. It is time Mm -hmm. for them to return to the table and eat with their brothers and sisters. Look, there's a seat right there for you. And so I started saying that again and again to the prophets who feel like, (laughs) the prophetic people who feel like, oh, I don't know where to go. And I'm like, hey, it is your season to find your community. It is your season to find that home. Yeah. That's cool, that's man. That's really cool. That's encouraging because I'm I'm that person for someone, mm-hmm. uh, the, the the listener, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I I haven't had, you know, I've only had just a couple of mm-hmm. very minor, you know, experience. You could call it experience light, mm-hmm. yeah. You yeah. know, um, yeah, and I've and same. I've shared those, but I've shared a couple with them, you know, on the live, mm-hmm. a couple of them on the live stream, mm-hmm. uh, but I am definitely that person for for other people. Mm-hmm. Um, that's really encouraging. I mean, the most important thing is just pray, just put it out there, pray, say, God, help me find this community. Yes. Um, yes. That's awesome. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. Actually, it's one of, it's a question that Jonathan came up with. It's an awesome (laughs) question. And it ties into so much of what we talk about with a lot of our guests here. Uh In your encounters and experiences, have you ever had um, or received any messages related to the end times at all? Mm. uh, Being, you know, are we in those latter days or Mm -hmm. can you talk about that at all? Yeah, I could talk about it. Uh, you know, a little bit on, on what I can share. So uh, I, I'm very careful with how much the Lord wants me to share with, uh, with these things, just because um, there's a lot to be said and there's a lot to be interpreted. 
you know, so um, what I can say, I'll, or sure, on, on some things, um, at the moment, uh, we, we have to get ready to really know who Jesus is, really, um, because there's so many other voices that are going to come up. They're going to sound so similar to him. I had this dream where my pastor and I, uh, we, he, in the dream, he said, hey, Micah, Jesus is here. And I said, oh, my gosh, that's awesome. And he said, we're going to go listen to him. He's out in the I can't remember the area he was in, but he said, he's over in this blah, blah, blah area. Let's go. So we drive a few hours to go see him, me and my pastor and a couple of executive pastors. And uh, I get to him and I see this Jesus in the, and some well-respected leaders were surrounding him. And, um, and he was talking. And when I looked at him, I was stunned because I immediately knew like, that is not him. So I pointed at him and I said, you are not Jesus. You're a false Jesus. Who are you? Reveal yourself. And he, that false Jesus looked at me and out of his mouth came all these snakes. And at least he's poisonous snakes. And like mm. he vomited it up. And I sit up from my bed and I'm sweating because, you know, I'm hot and the anointings in the, in the room. And this angel standing right in front of me. And he said, did you get that? And I said, uh, I'm shaking. I said, yeah, I think I understand. He said, it is better now that they know who he is right now because yeah. there is coming voices that those who claim to know him will not be able to discern who is actually standing in front of them. Yep. And mm-hmm. I was so yeah. impacted by that. And so that's one thing I keep championing right now, wherever I go is we have got to be intimate with Jesus because things are shaking. Things are supposed to shake. You know, things are supposed to rattle. You know, but my thing is, is I'm I'm believing for a church that will not sway by the coming winds of going left and right, but that they Mm -hmm. know him and focused on the king of kings, Jesus, the anointed ones, and that these the anointed one and that the prophets, the prophets would now start prophesying Jesus saying, look at him. This is what he's like. This is what his voice sounds like. This is what his kingdom is like. You know, so that way we'll get ready for those times that are ahead of us. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about your ministry. Tell us about Behold Wonder. Yeah. Yeah. So Behold Wonder is, it's a ministry that the, um, that um, my, my friend, he started this. Well, he said, Mike, you know, maybe you should start a blog post. And I thought, oh, well, and I don't know. I was writing things on Facebook and I was like, I don't know if I'm going to do that. But uh, he, uh, long story short, he's, he came up with a, uh, like a website, um, a blog website. And he took some of my writings and he put up little images and he said, see, look, if you look like this. And I remember he posted it <laughs> and like, I would get like three likes and I'm like, oh, okay, no one's really reading it, <laughs> you know, whatever. And he started like a Facebook page and I was like, it was like my mom and siblings and some of my yeah. friends, yeah, yeah. you know, but it started to grow, you know, a couple of thousand and whatever. And then I'm at my pastor's uh, uh, house and uh, during a house group event, I'm laying on the carpet And this uh, angel flies in and his rings uh, contain all these kind of colors and his, his wings are so large, but it looks like a shape of a heart because they go up and they come around in front of him. And uh, like a silver kind of light coming from him. And he stands in front of me and he puts his hand on his chest. He said, my name is wonder. He said, and you will have a ministry that is focused on beholding the glory of God and you will prophesy the glory of God to those who have ears to hear. He said, and you will call your ministry, Behold Wonder. And I thought, oh, okay, that's cool. So I went back to Dustin <laughs> and, and and I forgot that my friend who, who was helping with the site and he's like, do you have a name? And, and I was like, well, you know, maybe Behold His Wonder. I don't know. You know, like and I told him about the encounter and then he just said, well, let, then we're just going to call it Behold Wonder. Yeah. And so, yeah. That's what we did. And awesome. so its primary fit mi- mission is to really raise up friends of God, people who Jesus is longing for friends right now. He appeared to me yeah. in 2008 and he and uh, with tears coming down his face. And and I remember he held he held my my face and I held his face. And I remember the feeling of the tears coming down my hands. And he said, son, he said, will you bring me friends? And no. I said, Lord, 
okay, but how about I prophesy about a comet or an earthquake? Because I, I, you know, I'm thinking like, I don't know. Really Save lives. Do. Yeah, like I want to yeah, do yeah. something like that. You yeah, know? yeah. Um, and he said, Mike, I have so many prophets, apostles, and teachers and pastors. He said, but you know, evangelists. He said, but I have very few friends. Will you yeah. bring me friends? And I said, okay, Lord, I'll do it. And so, behold, wonder carried that encounter into its, you know, into the focus of where I, I just. I want people to love Jesus with all their heart. You know, yeah. I want them to love him. I want them to, that's to awesome. hearts to be set apart for him. That's awesome. Yeah, man. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Um, can I, add, there's another, there's another question in the chat that sure. I wanted to ask you is actually by Tim Hig, uh, Hyman, mm -hmm. Hi Hyam, Hig Higgum, Higgum. Uh, he says, uh, Micah, a few months ago, you were on Elijah Fire, which is a mm -hmm. YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. uh, he said, um, what did Jesus say to you about porn? Mm. Uh, you made a comment on that on that video months ago. Mm -hmm. what, can you can you share a little bit about about that? Um, yes. So there were several things that the Lord uh, pornography was a huge struggle of mine, even as a seer. And I would see the demons even in like the videos I watched. And I still watch the videos, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and I would see Eden you know, with his wings and he would turn to the, to the, to, to the right. And his wings sometimes would be in front of me because demons would be reaching through trying to get to me and his wings wow. was protecting me. And so I would see these things and I still would look at pornography. Wow. But there was one moment where, um, in the midst of pornography, the Lord Jesus walks into the room. Now guys, I thought I was a dead man. Uh, you know, and, and you know, like, I, I, I don't know what I was thinking, you know, like you, I know he knew I was, struggling with it i was battling against it so but when he came when he came in i thought this is it i am in trouble <laughs> i am i don't know what's gonna happen i uh -huh. was i felt so much shame come on me and you know and so i closed the computer and jesus comes in and he looks at me and then he helps me to stand like i said jesus is strong man he is so strong he helps me to stand up and i'm looking at him right in the face face to face and he pulls out of his pocket this ring and he puts it on my finger and then gives me this white garment, this white, beautiful white robe, just puts it on me. And it's smelt with this fragrance of heaven and this crown on my head. And then he leans back and he looks at me and he said, this is the real you. This is who I mm. see. And I'm bawling my eyes out. I'm like, mm. oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And I, I grab his shoulders and I'm like, I have no idea who you are. I'm like, I... <laughs> Who are you? Why are you so amazing? You know, and and he, I remember he, he I, I've never shared this part before, um, but he pointed at my at my chest and then he, he put at my chest and he said, do you know why pornography is attacking you? And I said, why? I said, why, Lord? Why? Why is it so hard? He said, because pornography is a blanket that covers the entire head meaning the head is where all of our five senses are, you know, and we're, those are made to encounter the Lord Jesus. And so pornography puts a blanket over our head and it mm. keeps us from encounter, wow. you know, it keeps us from encountering the Lord Jesus. And he said, Satan is scared of the encounters you are going to share in the future. Encounters wow. that are going to set nations free, encounters that are going to set people free. And I felt this flame come in mm. me and I thought, oh, that's epic, you know, and he turns yeah. around, and he leaves. Now, guys, I thought even after that encounter, that pornography was gone, but I still had to walk out 11 years, 11 to 12 years yeah. of this, of standing on what God said, standing on his promise and what he spoke to me until it finally just broke and disappeared. Wow, man, that's powerful. So even after that kind of an amazing experience, it still took over a it's, decade. Yes, to yeah. walk through it. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to I'm going to ask a very rudimentary question, but I think this is maybe an important one. Mm -hmm. um, your whole ministry is to get people to, you know, behold the wonder of the Lord and to yeah. love Jesus and to be friends with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Real basic, simple question. Um, you and I understand it. A lot of people maybe need to hear mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Why? Why mm. should people want to be friends with Jesus? Why mm -hmm. should people 
Mm -hmm. yeah, I just want to hear you articulate it. Oh, no, that's great. It's it's because he's worthy. When uh, when someone stands in front of you with those tears and then they say, I want friends, your heart yeah. breaks. Yeah. Your heart breaks. And the king of the universe who is who created all things and all the realms and all the spiritual beings, and they're mm -hmm. looking at you saying, will you be my friend? It's like there is no other great to call it. I remember being walking around the throne of God. Now, God's throne is intense. <laughs> right. like just like i mean like it's noise and bolts of lightning and emerald colors and god's hair is mm -hmm. on white and smart it's just it's intense you know and angels tumbling and rumbling and people spinning it's it's intense <laughs> but i'm walking around the throne because the throne is not against the wall it's in the center you know it's mm -hmm. in the center of the room so everybody surrounds it but i'm walking with jesus and we're linked arms which i love it I loved, oh, I love him so much. Walking with him or linked arms. And he looks at me and he said, Micah. And I said, yes, Lord. And he said, you know, your, your ministry as a prophet, he said, that's only for the season of your lifetime on the earth. And I said, yes. He said, but you will always be known as friend here. Hmm. He said, there is no other greater calling than being hmm. a friend. And I was like, I want to be your friend. You know, he said, so go back and you tell the, he said, go back and tell the people that there is no greater calling than a friend. And he said, and I'm looking at everyone saying, will you be my friend? And so yeah. that's what I do. I come back and I, I tell people how much Jesus desires them and how much they're loved. It's reminiscent that's of God awesome. walking with Adam through the garden mm -hmm. before yes. the fall. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Reminds me of that. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, yes. that friendship. Yeah. Yes. That's really cool, man. Mm -hmm. Is that mm -hmm. what it means to be a seer prophet? Mm -hmm. Is that sort of the angle? Of that yes yeah i love that you said that absolutely the ministry of the seer prophet you know we see angels we see spiritual beings and we love that that's fun but yeah. the main ministry of the seer prophet is to reveal jesus you know who yeah. is jesus what's he like you know how, describe his love you know I, guys honestly I had to adjust to this because I was like, I want to like, I read about the prophets in the Bible. I love their ministry. And even the prophets of, of old in my time, I love their ministry. But I would be like, I want to do what they're doing. And I go and have these encounters with Jesus in heaven and I, or the father even. And I'm mm -hmm. on the throne, the lap of the father. And I'm taking my hand and I'm brushing it through his hair. His father has white hair, brushing through his hair and the lights that come off of his hair whoosh, go into your body. And I'm thinking, this is so cool. And so I'm waiting for a message. And then, Father, I'll hear him say, I'll hear him say, he says, you go back and you tell people what my hair feels like. And I'm like, wow. why? Hmm. I'm thinking, like, why do I care about that? You know? But then I start to understand this. Like, people don't believe that he is real. Yeah. That he is a real person. He is not some idea. He's not some just invisible God that you think is there. When you, mm -hmm. he is real. You can, you can touch father and not die. You can feel him. He feels different than Jesus. Jesus has flesh on him. He has the yeah. new body, but you can touch father as well. And he feels completely different, you know? Yeah. And so they're like, they're, what they're trying to say, well, in this ministry I'm doing is like, I am really real. I am yeah. real and I am a living being that's desiring friendship with you. It's not something that just happens in your mind. It's physically, it's spiritually, it's mentally. I'm with you and I want to be with you. And it rocks my world. I'm just like, <laughs> this is the best thing I can ever prophesy. You know? That's amazing. So it seems it, it's a spiritual realm. It's a yep. heavenly realm. It's a yep. spiritual world. Is it, um, and there may not be an answer for this. Mm -hmm. Is it quantifiable as far as being interdimensional is it something that breaks through the veil and mm. is accessible via dreams mm. and have you ever done any sort of interpretation of any kind of dreams that you've had or other or have angels given you interpretations of dreams? that's a good i know that's a ton of question. questions but oh no that's fine this is great um it is a realm that you can access and there's plenty of ways you can access it by visions by uh, dreams, your feelings can even access them. So yeah. all of your senses that God gave you, your five senses God gave you, you can use those senses to access the spiritual realm. See, what's what's interesting is seers, the ministry of the seer uh, does reveal Jesus, but they also equip people to, to experience, to see the supernatural realm. And so yeah. all of our senses are used are being used for this physical world or or the human earth realm. I even hate saying physical and non-physical since the spiritual realm is just as physical. It's just a different substance, you know. Yeah. So I like to say the earth realm and the spirit realm. 
you're, you're, you have senses for the earth realm, but you also have senses for the spirit realm that you can train, use to, uh, to discern what's happening in the spirit world. And so dreams yeah. is a very common way um, yeah. that we are able to discern. And I've had angels come in and uh, lay their hands, <laughs> lay their hands on my, on my chest. And then I would have this dream of, of a spiritual being or going to a spiritual world or spiritual place. And I thought, and I want to say to the dreamers, your dreams are real, okay? If yeah. you dream in the spirit, if you dream and see spiritual beings in your dreams, those are real. Daniel was one of the ones that had dreams that were intense and awesome, and they were real. Yeah. It's just yeah. you're seeing in the spiritual world while your body is asleep, okay? Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to say that, yeah, dreams is a okay, great that's way awesome. to access. One of our patrons had asked that. She uh, she said she had the number 18 three times in her dream last night. And mm -hmm. that's like, yeah. oh, man, I, I don't know. It might mean. Anytime something, something happens three times, yeah. you should pay attention. Yeah, yeah. three yeah. times. And yeah. I tell people this about dreams. It says in that, um, and Daniel, doesn't all dreams, uh, interpretation belong to God? Yes. And dreams are beautiful because the Lord will speak in an intimate language that uh, you and him will understand in your dreams. And yeah. so when you're trying to give understanding or help someone bring understanding in their dreams, you start to ask them questions about their life because a lot of times, like for example, a dog and a dream to me can mean something different than a dog and a dream to you because our language yeah. is different and God knows how our languages work. And so there are very, it's a very fun mystery you know, to search out with the Lord meetings of dreams. Yeah. 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 So the, you don't even like referring to spiritual and physical as being separate. It's all kind of intertwined. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Are your mm -hmm. experiences affected by travel or location such mm -hmm. as Holy ground cemeteries, churches, are there lodestones yeah. or nexus mm -hmm. points? Oh, that's a fun question. Absolutely. Yeah. There's, um, I, a lot of times when I travel to mountains, I will see large, 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 large angels standing on mountains. Angels love mountains. Really? Uh, really? We were in Colorado this uh, summer uh, and I, you know, we were Salida, uh, Colorado and I fly in and, you know, and I see angels on the planes or flying next to me, the planes. And I'm just like waving at them. And my mom, she's all like, are you looking at the angels out the window? And I'm like, yes. Cause you know, they're sitting on, the, sometimes they sit on the wings of the plane and they're just talking to each other. And then they know I can see, they notice I see them. Cause sometimes angels don't know that you can see them. Not all the time. Cause they're just, you know, really? you know? and so when they see someone can see them, sometimes they get like, Oh, and they'll wave, you know, if they're I'm more like, oh, it's like, oh, hi, you know, um, but I, I, yeah, we fly in and we go, we, we drive up to the mountains of Salida and I'm about to speak at the church and I'm thinking like, hmm, this is interesting. I could feel the pool, an angelic pool, the mountains in the distance. And so I'm looking, I look up at the, the mountains and I see this huge, huge angel with a long staff and its wings were just as wide as the mountains and he was standing on it. And I'm thinking, oh, goodness gracious. And I noticed that there was this, this black demonic energy hitting the angel's back. And I right. thought, now what is going hmm. on? So I started, I went to the pastor and I said, was well, there anything on the other side of the, <laughs> of the mountains? He said, oh, that's where all, a lot of the cults in the new age and stuff are on the other side of the mountain. I said, well, yeah, yeah. there's an angel there that's keeping that from coming on this side. I told him wow. that and he said, Oh, he's like, that's so cool. And some other people in the church <laughs> we would see bright lights on the mountain. They would see the mountains would glow or there'd be some kind of lights up there. And I said, that's the angel up wow. there protecting, hmm. you know, so locations. Interesting. Yeah, I'll see Man. different kinds of angels and locations even. Mm -hmm. we, you know, we got to get you in more churches because so many <laughs> churches, they, they don't talk about any of this. Stuff. They don't they want don't, to. They don't talk about the Nephilim in Genesis 6. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't really mm -hmm. want to talk about the fact that like. Yep. They don't want to talk about the end times. No, they don't anyway. want to, you know, they don't want to talk about spiritual warfare and how there are beings that are contesting over you. And yeah. like yeah. You know, sometimes it doesn't go the way that it, you know, you would want it to go. And right, like, right. no one talks about this stuff and there's i think there's a, a subconscious hunger for it that yeah. people mm -hmm. don't even because it's like why are you here if you're here at church how mm -hmm. is it not to engage the numinous yeah mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. yeah. you're just going to hear another platitude about fish and loaves 
Yeah. Like, I mean, yes, it's great, but mm -hmm. like there, there's a whole other side that is powerful mm -hmm. and vibrant. Yes. Yeah. You know, yes. that no one ever. Yeah. So, um, yes. yeah, Nick, I know at least that last question. Yeah. I want to ask you one <laughs> last. Gotta, I know yeah. you got to, I know you said you We're had an hour. Up for, on an hour. You're yeah, good. I you're you good. Now, I got I, I got some time. I still have some time. You guys are All right, cool, sweet. Cool. Sweet. So when are you going to write a book? <gasps> oh, I got a book coming out, y'all. Yes, do you really? I yes, do. I knew it. Yes. I knew it. Nice. So I, it's, I it. <laughs> we're hoping for December is the launch time okay. for it. In fact, I, I, I had a small meeting with um one of the t uh, one of my staff who were in the prophetic ministry. She's helping me like get the book together, and my best friends, and they're working on things um to help with that. But uh, it's December is the date of when. The month when we want to release the book okay okay but i'm Ooh. trying not to give definite dates because just in case something happens oh i know well, how it goes. At end of december but yeah. guys i'm so excited it's like got encounters in there and stories of angels heavens demons satan oh, even yeah. is in there you yeah. know um but it's it's awesome it really will inspire oh, i can't wait so well cool, when, when it's out i hope that you'll consider coming back and talking yeah. about oh, the book yeah. You know, yeah. so we can get the word. We'd love to help you get the word out about the book. Oh, yeah. thank you, thank yeah. you. I'm excited. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> do you have a title? Do you have a title in mind, or do you not want to share that yet? Um, I do have a title, but I'm not going to share it yet. All right. All right. <laughs> you guys might have to be surprised. I understand. <laughs> that's right. That's solid. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, Gabriel. Uh, Gabriel Bello. Dude, how amazing would it be to have a church service where Gabriel Bello does the worship, and then Micah Turbo comes on? and does like because gabriel's so awesome at like the music he uh -huh. understands yeah. praise and worship and how you're supposed to structure it you know oh, awesome. and then we could give yeah. Mike and we could have micah like give a sermon that's yeah. the way oh, to do it that would be fun he that said uh, fun. he had a really cool comment in here gabriel said uh that reminded me of a demonic spirit i saw that looked like the evil spirit from disney's fantasia mm. it was mm -hmm. sitting on my church building i told my mother shortly after it had a major split the church had a split which is wow. very common especially yeah. around here yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I sadly, I've seen angels on buildings and I've seen demons on, on church buildings. And, um, yeah. it's really sad when that happens. Cause you know, things are going on, you know, in, in, in the service and angels are still assigned to churches like in revelation angels nice. assigned to the church and whatever, you know, angels will be assigned to churches. And I love going to churches and seeing the angel there. Cause I'm like, Ooh, I wonder what they, what the, and I start asking Holy spirit, like, okay, um, what's their assignment, Lord, that I can, you know, encourage them. And then when there's demons on the building, now them critters, they know better. <laughs> I don't play with them. You know, yeah. like if I'm coming to a place and there's a critter on top of the building, I'm like, look, you got to go while I'm here. You got to go. I don't know. You know, I, mm -hmm. I know there's other kind of things that might be involved with you being here, but I don't want you here while I'm in this building. You nice. Know, so I'll release the host of heaven. And I'm like, <laughs> command oh. authority. Yeah. Over like demonic. You ain't hanging out here while I'm here. No, -uh, you know. <laughs> so um, uh, Kira, uh, one of our um, one of our other guests in the chat uh, had a really good question. Mm -hmm. uh, that's probably going to knock out one of our questions that we yeah. had. Yeah. Um, but I do think it's relevant. She says tips on how to start meeting or getting to know my angels please is oh. there any advice you could give to people oh who, that's a great question how they might do that yes and i just want to say you know angels are fun and any real angel will never ever ever lead you away from the lord any angel that the lord sends will point you straight back to him because a hmm. lot of people will get all angel crazy like sometimes they're all like oh michael you why don't you talk about jesus aren't you scared of the angel of light that's going to lead I, you know, yeah, there's an angel of light, but it's why I say, you know, Jesus. So if something comes to you, you know, that yeah. is, you'll recognize it right away because real angels, real angels carry God's light. Yeah. Right? And that should be a, the number one thing you should discern. What presence are you feeling with a being that's standing in front of you? So I tell people this, you know, want to help them get better at um, discerning angels. Angels love to encourage people. They love it. And they love encouragement. So when people say, I want to see angels and I say, okay, that's cool. And I start listening to the things that come out of their mouth. I'm like, that's one reason why you're not seeing them is because there's so much negativity coming out of your mouth. Uh, okay? yeah. When they, whenever they're around us, sometimes they come around us because they're waiting to be 
given weapons from the words that we are speaking. Really? I've seen angels be equipped with armor. They come around to a person and as a person's praying and encouraging. So even the slightest encouragement of like, you're going to have a good day or, you know, it doesn't have to be a massive prophetic word, but it can be something slightly, you're going to have a good day or you're going to this and that. And angels will be, a sword will form right in front of them. Wow. The angel will grab the sword and he'll be assigned or go after, you know, and minister to that person. So cool. learn to encourage people. Be relentless yeah. at encouraging people. Hmm. Find cool. something good to say about someone. Yeah. And in the process of you doing that, ask the Holy Spirit, you know, what is happening in the spiritual world as I'm encouraging this person? Yeah. That's one. The second thing that I do, and these are things I practice in my life just to stay up, you know, to stay sharp. One of the things that, uh, the second thing I do is I sing. Sing the scriptures. Really? Sing the Bible. Really? Oh, I love singing the Bible. I mean, I'll cool. open up a passage to, to in the Bible, I'll turn on music. It could be techno music. I put on techno music. I put on, you know, like I love singing to the Bible to techno music. It's got to be, <laughs> you know, yeah. and I just sing the word and it creates a hunger for more. It creates a hunger for the presence and angels first and foremost, they are worshipers. They worship Jesus. Yeah. So whenever you step in the flow of worshiping the Lord, angels naturally come in. I have done this where I turn on worship music and I'll sing and I literally will look and wait in my house and see an angel come in because they were flying by and they heard music. They heard yeah. worship and they came into the house and they said, oh, we heard <laughs> said, we heard the music. We heard the music. <laughs> well, let's sing. You know, let's worship Jesus. And so we're like, ah, we're worshiping Jesus. So singing is a huge thing. Learn to sing the scriptures as much. Do those two things and your senses will sharpen. Number yeah. three. And this is one that um, a lot of people would not consider to be as important, but I, I find that it's it really sharpens you, is what you experience, what you smell, what you sense, what you feel, write it down. Hmm. Because what that does is that it um, sometimes your spirit man gets cluttered with so many things, the things that you're feeling, that writing it down also shows the Lord and the Holy Spirit that you value the revelation that you're getting, no matter how small it is. Yeah. I felt this. I smelt that. Or, oh, Lord, I even did this. Oh, Lord, uh, today was kind of blah, you know. Mm -hmm. And just it's always important to write down the things you're experiencing in a little notebook, on your computer, on your phone, and that yeah. sharpens you. Oh, that's awesome. So I have I have another I have a follow up question to that. Um, and actually, uh, Joey Payne just asked that. Yeah, so that's my mom. That's his hi, mom. Hi, mom. Oh, yeah, that's mom. Your mom. Uh, yeah, that's my mom. Yeah. yeah. Hey, she wanted to ask: uh, Is the father still creating angels? <gasps> oh, father is still creating all kinds of things, angels included. Uh, just I'm just gonna, and I don't even fully have. <laughs> I don't know how this is all going to work, but God is creating dimensions and realities and realms even now that are like so big that he even needs like a new system for these things to exist and that will take part in ruling and reigning with him but i saw things where cool. uh the father had uh these great uh, uh they look like um pearls or, or marbles around his wrist you know and because he's beautiful so sometimes father will have different kinds of things on him but I noticed it, you know, I, and I pointed at him and I said to Jesus, and I said, those are gorgeous. I said, Jesus, what are those marbles? And Jesus leans in and he said, Micah, those are new realms and realities, planets and spheres mm -hmm. that the father is going to breathe into existence. But right now he doesn't have a system for them to exist. So he wears them as a bracelet around his wrist. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah man that's so oh, that's cool. awesome that like, is what and so jesus said micah he looked at me he was so excited he said micah you will do things things beyond uh beyond in the in the new realms and the new heavens that you haven't even dreamed of you know yeah. like the stuff and the gifts that we have are just for this time you know for this season but the thoughts for us, the thoughts God has for us are more numerous than the grains of sand. So there's destinies and purpose inside of us that we haven't even touched on yet. Yeah. That man. we're going to do in these different. That's cool to think about. It, I know it makes you think what, you know, because it, it's like after, 
this is done after this mm -hmm. time on the earth yes. is done and the earth is remade and heaven is remade and mm -hmm. you know new jerusalem is created and then it's like yeah. well what then like yeah mm -hmm. You know, yeah. uh, what yeah. are we going to be the angels for new realities or new dimensions? Mm -hmm. that, I mean, who knows? Who you knows? Know? Yeah. I would never want to put words in God's mouth or, course, you know, or yeah. reinterpret. But man, it's just I, who knows what the possibilities yes. are. Yeah. I think about that all the time. Yes. I, it's, it's going it's, to be it, amazing. It's going right? to beat my, you know, hour and a half commute to downtown <laughs> Nashville every morning to slug <laughs> out behind a keyboard. Yeah. That's for right. sure. I'm going to soar through the cosmos on <laughs> wings of fire. Yeah, right. That's Flying right. Through cosmos In my Toyota <laughs> Corolla. <laughs> yeah, right, he's gonna, right. He's going to have an angelic Corolla. You know? Yeah, <laughs> angelic Corolla. Uh, there's, uh, uh, there's been a few comments in the chat, uh, some people touching on this, and when mm -hmm. you're talking about like testing the spirits and, and having sure. discernment, uh, you know, the Bible says that, you know, even the devil can appear as an angel of light. Sure. Yeah. And um, are there... Have, have you ever seen a counterfeit angel or something oh, posing yes. as an angel? Well, yes, tell us I about have. that. Yes, I've had seen that. Um, uh, I wrote about some of these experiences on my website. Um, I actually don't remember the title of it, but um, I there was a season where uh, different beings who weren't from the Lord um, that were masking as uh, angels of light or heavenly beings, and they would come before me and they would try to invite me to go to places with them. Right. And I knew spiritual I, places or physical places, both sometimes wow. it, was, it, it was both. And um, I would to the way I would test them is like I said, I'd immediately, I, you know, before it, before you go anywhere with any spiritual being, like I said, the first thing that you will feel when it's a spiritual being from God, you will feel the presence of the Lord. You because yeah. they come straight out of the throne, they come straight out of God's presence. So you mm. will feel the residue of heaven, and heaven feels electrifying, you know. Yeah. But this, I was like, this is odd. I don't. I was like, hmm, this is this is different. I didn't feel the presence. So then I pointed at it and I said, Who are you? And the, the spiritual being said, Come on, just come on, just come on. Mm. God loves you. Just come on, come on. I said, Who are you? Who are you? And angels, real angels, will answer you. The fallen ones will still talk all around the main question. Now, some uh -huh. people will say, yep. some people will say, you ask them as Jesus Christ, Lord. And that's not a good enough question because demons believe Jesus Christ is Lord. Okay. Mm -hmm. They know that. So if you ask them the demon that they'll say yes, because this, it's true. Every spiritual yeah. being knows Jesus is Lord, you know, so that you, there's gotta be something different and it has to be, you have to know the voice and the sound of your King. Of, the, of Jesus Christ. you got to know the voice and sound of your king. Stay in the word. I tell people yeah. to, Man, to, to, to avoid these counterfeits that are coming. Remember I said that earlier in the episode. Mm -hmm. Counterfeits yep. are coming. You have to stay in the word. Meditate on the word. Read yeah. the Bible. Read the Bible. Because that spiritual beings that aren't of him will say things and twist things. And if you're not reading, you won't be able to catch it. Okay, you yeah. won't be able to catch it. And the same thing goes with, look, you got to know what the presence of God feels like. You know, you yeah. got to be walking with him. You got to be having encounters with Jesus so that when things come and they don't carry that, you immediately say, oh, get out. Because I've had them come and, you know, fly in because spiritual beings are curious. Okay, Some, they're, sometimes they're just curious. They're like raccoons. You know, they're just curious, <laughs> you know, yeah. they come in and they're just like, what's this guy doing? You know, and, you know, and they'll come in and I'm, you know, and like I said, I'm used to spiritual beings, good and bad. And, you know, they'll come in and I'll look and I'll, uh, you got to go. No, no, not my house. No, bye. <laughs> you know, and they'll just, they'll just turn around. You know? and, 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 like a crackhead. Yeah, you know? like, uh, turn around. You know, and leave. I'm like, you can't be. There was one time where I melted. The, 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 there was a demon that I came home from my best friend's house, and there was a demon came and landed on and on my apartment, and he stared at me, you know, and he was all gangly and death like, and he said, "You, you are a problem for me," you know. He kept saying that, and I just felt a little bit like Gandalf, and I was like, "That's great." I felt a little bit like Gandalf, and I said, "Fire come upon you and consume you." Nice. <laughs> and the demon went. Wah! And it just, <laughs> it just melted into this goop. And this angel, you know, comes in with a trash bag and he had overalls and these brown wings and beautiful brown wings. He comes in and looks at the pile of mush 
and he just cleans up the demon mush. <laughs> the cleaner. He's like, he's, yeah. He's Sanitation like the cleaner. angel. <laughs> the janitor. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And he's like, good job. Good job. And like, <laughs> and he's, he's probably like, been <laughs> waiting for millennia. <laughs> to clean out the goo. Yeah. It's like, yeah. finally, someone yeah. did it. Yeah. I'm waiting hey, around Joe, to it's, scoop it's one of these clean that up. Yeah, yeah. Janitorial right. Jehuel, you know. Yeah, right, yeah. Janitorial Jehuel. <laughs> Michael, right. where would, um, uh, it, we're almost at like an hour, sure. hour and 15 minutes. Oh, so we wow. probably should let you go here. At least we got time, but if you got to go, we'll let you go. Um, sure. Where would people... This is the second to last question that I would sure. have at least. Right, right. No. Uh, <laughs> where would people start? You want people to stay in the word. Where would yes. be a good place for people to start, in your opinion, with the uh, Bible? A, a, in the Bible? Yeah. Um, that's a really great question. Um, I I always tell people to start um, with the gospel. Specifically, the gospel of John is a really good one to yeah. start. And then Mark is a good one that just kind of is just you know, very systematic, this happened, this happened, this, you know, and it's, it's not too yeah. long in certain areas, but I start with the gospel of John. Um, I tell people to start there and, you know, it doesn't, you don't have to rush. What we're doing is we're, we're encountering a person. Okay. And when some people start reading the Bible, they feel like they have to get through the whole thing relatively quickly or get through the whole thing. I need to read the whole thing. No, what we're doing is we're encountering a person. Yeah. And invite Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is brilliant, yeah. brilliant at opening the word of God to us. I always invite Holy Spirit to say, okay, Holy Spirit, I'm reading. Uh, open this up to me. Where, where do you want to highlight? You know, so you're looking for encounters. You're waiting for encounters with God within the scriptures. And that's their goal. Yeah. yeah. God encounters. Yeah. That's beautiful. Um, uh, Gabriel Bello uh, has mentioned it a couple times, and uh, I think once your book comes out, uh, I think he's going to be right. There needs to be uh, a sitcom about you, about your life. You know, oh, that TBN, would be fun. maybe you know, Kurt Cameron, like somebody with the budget. <laughs> we'll get Angel Studios this. to do it. Yeah. Oh, there yeah. we go. Yeah. 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 That would be fun. Yeah. Yeah. People have asked that before. They're like, yeah, you should, there should be a sitcom about you, like with all like the different angels you've seen and things that go on. I'm like, that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Well, this has been, this has been a great conversation. It's been so yes. fun. Yeah. And we got uh, to almost all of our questions. Yeah. We really did. <laughs> we had, like we three really left. Did. Well, I mean, this one, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this one, it, it, a couple he actually already. I yeah, just that's haven't true. Taking yeah. them off the list yeah. here, but you've mm -hmm. been fantastic. This has uh, been one of the best ones we've had. And oh, I can't wait for you. your book to come out, man. That's yeah. going to be so exciting. Yeah. yeah that's going yeah. awesome. to be great. That's going to be great. Well, uh, tell people where they can find you. I have um, I have your website up. Sure. Uh, but where where can people find Micah Turnbow? So you can find me on Facebook. Um, and I'm just looking on my phone to make sure I say it right because sometimes I don't. Yeah. So I'm just Micah Turnbow on Facebook. And then on Twitter, uh, I, I'm Mike at Behold Wonder. And then on Instagram, I'm Behold Wonder. Okay. And then YouTube, uh, I'm Behold Wonder on YouTube. Nice. So um, you'll be able to find me, find me there, and I post regularly on 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 those things. So and just share yeah. stories. And sometimes God will give me correction words where I'll correct things. And sometimes yeah. they're are friendly sometimes i'm not sometimes people get mad at me but you know hey, it's okay the, the, that's the truth and yeah, the truth really is the truth. Truth. yeah. You know? yeah. yeah i love you okay. but we need to stop doing this right there guys <laughs> that's right yeah yeah the I janitor angel needs some work so you better yeah, start, right, some work. You know, get the get the praying you know right micah right. turnbow behold wonder the man who sees angels seer prophet uh, we have had an immense pleasure and honor having you on. Thank we you. hope that you will come back sometime, especially so we can uh, share your book with the world. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being on The Goslings. This is oh, really awesome. You guys are brilliant. You have such good questions. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. Thank you, awesome. thank you, man. This has been so much fun. I'm so glad that this worked out. So thank yeah, you thank so you. much, man. Oh, you're welcome. You're so welcome. Bless you and have a great rest of your day, Mike. Thank Thanks. You. God bless, Mike. We'll talk to you later. All righty. Bye. Bye. Mike Turnbo. Mike Turnbo, baby. He's so awesome. That was awesome. So awesome. Yeah. That was I so love cool. that guy. We we were trying for a long time to uh to get Mike. We kept going back and forth with like all these all these different dates because he is. He's super busy. Yep. You know, and then we finally and it worked out. nailed a date down. And God's timing. You know, the right yeah. people are gonna hear this. That's right. Yeah. yeah. I really believe that.
Yeah. I really believe that. Yeah, so, it was uh, awesome. That was uh, probably one of the most powerful hours we've had. And we have 107 people on the live stream. I, is that a record? I think so. I think for the live chat, uh, a lot of people who really follow Micah yeah, came thank over. You. And yeah, thank you guys. It's been great. I mean, the yeah. chat's been going crazy. There's no way I could have kept up with the chat. I know. This I was trying to watch so it great. while it was happening. And there have been some great questions. We apologize if we didn't get to all of your questions. We had two or three left that we didn't get to. Uh, Michael was very gracious with his time yeah. and uh, he was a great guest, but we really appreciate everybody tuning in and all of the uh, fans of Micah who watched, yeah. who came on here. Uh, this was like probably one of the biggest turnouts we've ever had as far as yeah, huge. live audience and participation in the chat. So yep. if we missed your question, we apologize, but hopefully we can get Micah back once his book comes out and then we oh, yeah. can revamp. Great. And in any questions, you know, if you, if you ever want us to ask any questions for any specific guests that we have coming out, then you can reach us. And how would you know about those guests that we are maybe going to have coming out? What is the way to find out about well, that, Nick? The best way to find out about who our guests are going to be is to join our community. Yes. Uh, shout out to our patrons. Thank you. I know uh, Jay Reese, Shannon, uh, yeah. of course, Roseanne, Adam, and Mike. Yeah. Uh, those are our patrons. Uh, we always give them a shout out at the end of the episode. We'd love for you to join our community too. Uh, we update our community with our upcoming guests. Yep. Uh, we have uh, exclusive content. We do uh, monthly Discord chat yep. with our with our guests uh, with our patrons as well. Which, by the way, we need to do that uh, yeah. here pretty soon. And uh, I mean, you can get copies of you know our Jonathan's Heavenly Realms mm -hmm. series. Uh, you you want to read seven teachers. novels about angels beating each other up <laughs> right you know <laughs> i write kids books uh some of our stuff you can actually get for free if you're a patron yeah. uh and uh and, but but really it's a it's a great place to connect with uh you know like-minded people it's a solid uh, network yeah. yeah and it's a lot of fun yeah. and everybody everybody brings something interesting to the table it's really cool to just like sometimes it's just fun to watch the yeah. chat yeah and just watch people talk to each other and share their experiences yeah. and everything it's pretty neat yeah it's been great yeah it's been so, great tonight man thank yeah. you thank you but yeah anyway go to go to patreon.com forward slash the goslings yeah sign up five dollars a month it's a red bull yeah it's one red bull a month and it's healthier than a red bull and, it, and it's it keeps, at least not gonna hurt it, you any more than a red bull <laughs> It's a, it's a cup of coffee. It's yeah. a cup of Starbucks coffee. Uh, but uh, we'd love to join. We'd love for you to join if you want to join us. That'd be great. Yeah, That'd be great. and it helps us out tremendously because we have kind of like a budget of zero, right? <laughs> for for this, yeah. and uh, we are constantly aiming to be able to afford uh, a producer or engineer mm -hmm. of some sort who can help monitor the chat. Yep. Make sure there are no hiccups in the sound. Yep. Don't want to miss anybody on the chat. Yeah. Yep. Make sure everything is you know streamlined, and it takes a lot of pressure off Nick. Um, I do good with the pressure though. It, it takes, he does, he does very well under pressure. And then it takes guilt off of me because I don't help Nick at all with any of it. So. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's not true. So help him run That's true. Jonathan's the reason <laughs> we had Mike Turbo on. He was the one that found him and connected with him and worked out the time. And he, he did all the work on that. Yeah, so you know, know. thank Jonathan for, for really going to bat for us. Even a broken that. clock is the right choice. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Um, I don't think there's, I don't know if there's anything. Yeah, else. We got t-shirts. We got t-shirts. Like uh, I love this one. Every time a bell rings, a devil's laptop. We love typewriters yeah. and technology. Yep. Uh, and then, of course, we got the old uh, interviews to strike down the darkness yeah. T-shirt. Uh, we have some other logo T-shirts too. We, yeah. got, uh, we got a bunch of cool stuff. Up My on, favorite uh, is aliens are just demons you can shoot. Yeah, and it's adorable. Yeah, it is. A little cartoon <laughs> alien on yeah, there. A little crosshair right over that cartoon deal. Yeah. Yeah, and mm -hmm. like the the dot is like right on his mouth. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but I think that's it. I think yeah, that's I think it. So. Uh, it's been really great. You guys are fantastic. Uh, let me just go back to the chat here real quick before we get off. Uh, mom, thank you. Joey Payne. Yeah, Joey. That's awesome. Shout Appreciate that. Joey. Kira, man, great questions. Kira OC. Yeah. Uh, man, really. Gabe, uh, man, it's so funny. You know, Gabe uh, was going crazy when Micah started talking about like worship. Mm -hmm. and and uh speaking positivity and how oh, that becomes a man. weapon in the yeah. spiritual oh man that was great i was yeah. watching gabe's chat there that was it was cool was like, oh, yeah. man i wish gabe were on with us right now That's so we gabe's can talk about wheelhouse. this yeah. gabe and micah on together would be a killer <sighs> live stream man that'd be cool man you might be able to make that happen i don't know we should try yeah hey we should try you know all you can really do cool <laughs> all one can do is try that's right yeah but everyone thank you so much for joining um yeah i mean there's just so many in the in, in, in the chat here yeah, I couldn't even I couldn't even keep up tons of new faces, tons of yep. new people. We we figure this is mostly um, uh, Micah's crowd. So we really yep. 
thank you guys are grateful to you guys for first of all being so loyal to someone who's such a beautiful soul like, yeah like absolutely a, such a sweetheart yep and uh and really admire the fact that you guys kind of came over and landed here to yeah. watch him on our it's, it's an awesome thank you yeah thank you guys really appreciate thank that. you thank you very much and yeah. uh we'll be back next week yeah i believe uh we got our favorite comedian coming back next week, John Bernardo. John Bernardo. Return of the typo. Yeah, we'll have to be just talking about typo. some fun stuff. It'll yeah. be good. It'll be a little. It'll be lighthearted. It'll be fun. It'll be, fun. It'll be funny. Yeah. yeah, it'll be good. Come have some laughs with us next uh, Sunday, four thirty, yeah. right here on the Goslings. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, I think that's it. Is it time to sign off? I think so. It is. It's uh, weird because it's not two and a half, three hours in, so I know. it feels kind of like, early. We feel like we're cutting out early. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, uh, that's all right. That's all right. I'm Jonathan. I'm Nick. We are the Goslings. Go forth. And 